We're spending some time looking at the major behavioral biases that we bring to bear whenever we're investing and how they can very often hold us back from being successful investors. Today, we're gonna to talk about anchoring. Now, anchoring is one of those things that isn't necessarily bad in and of itself, but sometimes it can lead to, shall we say, less than optimal outcomes when we're investing. So let's talk a little bit about that today and put five minutes on the clock down here. Say a quick thank you to my friends at 7am for continuing to sponsor the show, and let's crack on. Let's look at an example of anchoring so that we can really understand what it is and how it works. Probably the classic example is where we might own a share in a company and we value that share based on what we paid for it as opposed to what it's actually fundamentally worth. So let's say we bought some shares in Widgets Limited for £50 a share because we've been watching it and we can see that its share price has been rising quite strongly recently. But who knew, after we bought it, the share price plummets by half down to £25 a share. But we hold on to it because, well, you know, we paid 50 quid a share for it and not only do we not really want to take a loss, but we firmly believe that it's worth £50 a share because it was rising very strongly. So this is likely just a temporary setback. The price we bought it at is, quote, the right price, or at least we believe so, and it'll come back before too long. But in fact, Widget Limited's biggest customer has just declined to renew its purchasing contract, so its revenues are going to go down by 60%. So in light of that, the halved share price kind of makes sense. By the way, this is why I never recommend buying shares in individual companies. You know, we anchor our view of the worth of the shares based on what we paid for it. But if we actually took the time to look at the fundamentals, what's actually going on with Widgets Limited, we would understand that the new lower share price actually makes sense. We could do this with property too. And we base our view maybe of what our house is worth based on what we paid for it, the renovation work that we've done, rather than what the market says it is actually worth right now. Who cares if there's a new sewage works being built around the corner or another thousand homes being built on the field behind us? Our house is worth what we paid for it because, oh, just look at it. No. Anchoring can lead to illogical decisions. It can make us hold on to investment for longer than we should for illogical reasons. It really is a classic case of letting our human biases and behaviors get in the way of good investing. So how can you avoid anchoring this perception of price based on illogical things rather than the fundamentals, rather than what the market says something should be valued at? The best answer I can give to that is to have a system and to stick to it. I'll explain. When choosing your investments, have a clear method for doing so based on evidence rather than subjective short-term views on what's going on. Investing based on logic rather than emotion will always pay off. Don't make investment decisions after watching or reading the news. The general atmosphere of doom and gloom will actually impact your emotional state as you think about what should be an entirely rational decision. It could cloud the fact that you are investing or you should be over the very long term. Today's bad news might lead you to make a bad decision in the here and now, whereas actually today's bad news will be yesterday's old news and will have no bearing on your long-term plan whatsoever. But if we anchor our investment decisions to short-term bad news or misplaced perceptions about what's going on, that can lead to really bad outcomes. Strive to be objective at at all points in your investing journey. Always ask why a particular movement in the markets is happening, particularly when it's going down. Observe what's going on and don't react to it. Stick to the plan. And as always with biases and natural tendencies and behaviors, half the battle is being aware of them in the first place. Always ask yourself why you are feeling the way you are and what has caused that. Why do I think I should sell these investments right now? Why am I feeling like I do? Does it really make a difference in the long-term view of things? Try to answer those questions objectively as much as you can. And while you can try and answer those questions, don't act on the answers. Instead, just be rational and observe how you're feeling, chalk it down to interest and experience, and let your investments do their thing 
over the longer term. Easier to say than to do. I get it. I understand. We are human beings laced with emotion from head to toe. But if we can start to understand these things and tell ourselves to be rational whenever we're feeling a little bit wobbly, it'll serve us very well. Okay, so that is anchoring. Hope you're starting to understand a bit more about these biases now and starting maybe to see them in yourself as you're thinking about your wealth building going forward. Hope that was helpful. Stay tuned. Next week, I'll see you for another 5-Minute Friday. <laughs>